So, aloha. Oh, kendo. Aloha. Uh, aloha. So your aloha. Italian is better than my English, but because oh. I love to do things that are brave, <laughs> okay. let's do it in English. Thank you. Well, I, I like the joke. Sono più italiano della pasta, più romano del Colosseo. <laughs> oh, that's me. That's me. Um, that's You've been me. living in Italy, by the way. Yes, I grew up here. I went to, I did uh, scuola uh, media here, uh, al, al Maori, and then I did one year of Alessandro Manzoni, just down the road, classico, and then I did the rest at, 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 at um, Giulio Cesare in Rome. So, no way. Uh, no, I, did, I didn't know how, how much you were eating. Yes, yes, no, and the, because Rome is the, the stature of the country, so yes. <laughs> you know, Okendo is, is a great man. I mean, you, you're building an in, a very interesting and, and successful story, uh, both in the social and in the economical environment, hmm. which is like one of the one of, of, of out of a few i mean it's very difficult to do it like to have an impact mm. really strong impact and and at the same time being strongly and realistically successful mm. uh, you have a fund mm. um, that is being funded by big big players mm. like the Zuckerberg, cisco google uh, and the name is pretty interesting mm. i don't want to go, go wrong with the pronunciation yeah. but aram arambe Yes, it's, it's, the, it, it, it's the Harambians, Harambians, which derives from Harambe, which is Swahili for working together. That's great. And to us, the Harambians are the people who choose to work together. Um, and I like to joke, it's an overnight success that took 16 years. <laughs> but it happened overnight. It happened overnight. <laughs> because you, you've been building, you've been capable of building three of the five unicorns in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Harvard <laughs> Business School in 2021 did a wonderful case study about the Harambians. Yeah. And before 2021, there had been no unicorns in Africa. And many people thought there would never be. And in 2021, we finally had them. And three out of the five were led by Harambians. And so suddenly, this community of African entrepreneurs that seemed to, for many to be in the margins of the, in the conversation, suddenly was a very epicenter of the entrepreneurial conversation across Africa. And you told me a story about a man that was supposed to stay in the U.S., and work at the NASA, am I right? Oh, yes, yes, we had. And, and then he decided to go back to Africa, building yeah. an amazing success. Yeah, I think many, uh, uh, the Haramias typically are um, young Africans who initially were educated outside of the continent, were studying at Harvard, at MIT, at Oxford, and Harambe encouraged them to go back to Africa at the end of their studies to start ventures. And um, one of the, the stories she's speaking of is the one of Mr. Kwame Williams, who was at MIT, uh, NASA bound. He had done internships at NASA, was studying aerospace, aerospace dynamics um, at MIT. And yet he decided to go and work with farmers in rural Ghana against the advice and the pleas of his mother. And then the beautiful thing is that the company uh, has actually done so well that the father and the mother now moved back to Ghana to work with him. And President Obama gave him an entrepreneurship award. And that just shows you the potential of these young African innovators, right? What happens when you can bring local talent with deep insights into the local markets to create solutions that are tailored to those specific markets. You also have a very funny story with Obama as well. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was, but he tried to upstage me at my own graduation. <laughs> the poor man learned the hard way it could not be done. But the, the beautiful thing is at the end of my speech, I, I famously told the senator, you know, senator, I too was told that a person with a funny name like Okendo could not be president, but here I am. I said, don't let him stop you, Hugo, and run for president. <laughs> I love and, it. And the president got up and said, Lord, I'm glad Okendo is not running for president yet. <laughs> uh, but the reason that story is still relevant to Harambe is, is because the message that President Obama delivered to the class of 2007, uh, he's told all of us that you could take this piece of paper that you have earned, this degree, yeah. and just go in pursuit of the mighty dollar. But if you were to reduce your life to the simple pursuit of wealth, you would suffer from a poverty of ambition. And that somehow, if you really want to fulfill your true potential, you have to hitch a wagon to something larger than yourself. And that was over 17 years ago now, but uh, it's very much what has propelled not just the Alliance, Harambe, but Harambians, and I'm sure what's propelling Mint as well, right? How can we serve the communities around Absolutely. us? Absolutely, that's, that's what it's all about. And coming back to the ambition and the unicorn mm. kind of, um, culture, I would say, because it's all about, you know, mentality. Yes, correct. What, what do you think they have, the three unicorns mm. being funded? 
what do you think they have in common? Just, you know, mm. for us to yes. really get the lesson. Well, I think what, what they have in common was best articulated by a book that Har Harambian wrote in partnership with Professor, the late Professor Clayton Christensen at the Harvard Business School. And the book is called The Prosperity Paradox. And what that book does is it reminds us that across Africa, you have a series of innovators who are developing products and services, not just for the 80 million Africans in the middle class, but the 800 million who are not participating in the global economy. And the promise of that is that if you can figure out ways to deliver basic services, healthcare, education, and finance to people who cannot afford it, to the underserved populations, well, that can be of value, not just to people in Kinshasa, Lagos, and Nairobi, but to people in Milan, London, and Beijing. What that book reminds us is that there are global implications to African innovation. Because what, when you deal in very difficult environments at these entrepreneurs, do, where there's a lack of capital, lack of infrastructure, frugality. frugality, that creates a resilient business model. And that could then be a value for the whole world. I like to remind people that before China had Alipay, and America had Apple Pay, Kenya had Impesa. And in Harambe, we are crazy and bold enough to believe that's, that yeah. that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You're going to see a whole host of African bread innovation that is going to increasingly um, spread around the world. We should say the same for Italy. I yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, especially in the software, because we, we come, mm. you know, from, we've been funding this company in Italy, which is very well known for technology. Of course, mm. we've been making great, great, great success out of you know, in the computer industry and, mm. but the SaaS, you know, the software as a service, the inter, you know, the enterprise mm. software yeah. is, is, it's a, it's a different game. Yeah. And I know, you know, very well, our new CEO. Oh, yes. A good man. Yeah. <laughs> Lorenzo Larini. And mm. because he's, he's in your board. Yes. In Arambe, I think you might, you might tell us something about Lorenzo. Oh, gosh. Well, I think what I love about Lorenzo is we met at Oxford years ago while he, we were both attending an event organized by Harambe, funny enough. Um, and what I loved is that there are some people who intuitively get the, uh, you know, there's some people you can spend hours and hours trying mm -hmm. to play this and they never get it. <laughs> but Lorenzo had a, 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 a knee jerk, intuitive understanding of what we were doing and instantly realized what a growing number of people are realizing, right? That what is happening in Africa could actually be of value to the world. And shortly after our encounter, he at the time was working with a, a, a tech consulting company, I think in the US. And so I was one of the speakers down, uh, partly because he could see that the insights that these entrepreneurs were developing in Africa could be of value to companies around the world. And again, I get, you meet a lot of people, but not everybody does that. And so I think you're very lucky to have them now part of the dream team. Yeah, and actually, I would, I would have said the same thing, the same thing because when I met Lorenzo for the very first time myself, I was impressed by, I mean, I've been presenting my company many times, mm. yes. but yeah. the experience yeah. with him yeah. has been like by far wow. the most relevant one in terms of how fast yes. Yes. the person yes. in front of me, Lorenzo, was capable of really getting yeah. exactly mm. vision, mission, yeah. market opportunity, in few words. Yeah. And he was explaining to his colleagues <laughs> yes, in the meeting. Yes. And it was like, Whoa, yeah, how yeah. can he? So that's how I, we, you know, we get engaged. And, and then you combine right. that with a almost childlike enthusiasm. Exactly. And a joie de vivre. Right? Let it's me say, no, 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 no. Don't say that in French. You, just, you should say that in Italian. Because he's Italian. Yes. Even if his whole career has the been. Joy, yeah. There's it's just a joy there. And I yeah. think almost it doesn't matter what you do in life. Yeah. Uh, if you do not enjoy it, right, it, and you cannot find the joy in it, it will never work, right? I like to remind people, those who say that it can be done and those who say that it cannot be done are both equally correct. And you can see Lorenzo is always among the ones that, yes, we can, the kind of people. <laughs> and here we go again. Yes, we can. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, good sir. Thank Appreciate you. it.